Hey, it's Barry. And Dave. And Dan with Fish Hand Guide Service. And Jerry with Vero Beach Big Bass Charters. Here with another episode of Hooked on Headwaters down here at Headwaters Lake. We are here on a nice windy day, and that's what we're going to see a lot of coming into this fall season. So we're going to go ahead and cover some different tips and tricks on how to deal with the wind. That's what Dan's going to cover, and we're going to cover a little bit about what's going on as far as fish movement, things like that coming up here. Uh, as always, we want to mention Davis House Inn. Thanks for uh, you know being one of our faithful sponsors. We really appreciate you. And guys, if you're looking for a great place to stay, check them out. Information will be below. Clean rooms right on the water, great eating, so check them out. Information is down below. Super good rates too. So um, don't forget the discount. That's right. If you make on Headwaters to Kyle down there, you're going or Paula, you're going to get a discount. All right. So uh, great place to stay. So we're going to go ahead and jump right into things here, folks. Dan, let's talk a little bit about these windy conditions. What are you seeing out there? Well, actually, let's just cover the last. What, what, what have you seen over the last week and a half as far as fishing? We'll start with that. So it, the last week and a half, we've had some uh, decent days, nothing really spectacular. We've had the frontal systems come through, a lot of wind, major change in temperature. Mm -hmm. I was out today, uh, the highest I saw in the water at noontime was 65. So it's been pretty, pretty cold. So that's a major shock to the fish. So that's one thing we get this time of year. And of course, as we were saying, the wind mm -hmm. plays a big role. Uh, caught some on uh, uh, spinnerbait. A uh, few on, uh, of course, always the speed worm. Catch right. a lot on speed worm. Um, I had a day last week that uh, I fished actually Garcia's. We did okay. We did okay. We probably caught 18 fish for the day, but it was a struggle. Uh, day after a front came through. So, uh, Cinco's, uh, Chatterbaits, caught a few on Chatterbait as well. Yeah, so. And what's your depth range you're kind of targeting? Well, lately I've been fishing it, you know, between three and five foot of water. Okay. Jerry, what you got for the last week and a half or so? Uh, I spent a couple of days in Kennensville and, you know, we did really well in there fishing around, you know, some sawgrass areas we fished around and then we fished around a lot of lily pads and uh, a little bit of water hyson, some water cabbage, same thing as Dan was saying, three to five foot range, sandy bottoms, looks like these fish are starting to come in, you know, and think about making beds. but. You know, same same deal. Winter fronts got fronts coming in. You know, you got winds out of the north, northwest. Then they change into the northeast. 15 mile an hour sustained, 20 mile an hour gust, 28 mile an hour gust. And it makes things difficult. But you know, seems more around 9:30, 10 o'clock in the morning when that sun gets up and the fish start moving around some and they start feeding. Yeah, very good. That's uh, yeah. fished headwaters today and did really well. Um, started at daylight nothing until about 9 30 10 o'clock and then we just got into a spot that was some matted islands and uh, they came on and we ended up with probably 30 35 fish one of them seven seven plus uh multiple fours and fives so i mean the fish are there to be caught you know you just got to play with the weather and see what they're going to do yeah that's about all you can do for sure so we're talking about the favorite baits uh, of guys coming down they're looking to do some fishing I know we kind of covered a little bit, but you're feeling like the spinner baits are a good option. You're feeling like this, uh, what the speed worms are a good option. Um, mm -hmm. Rattle traps, silver sure. gold, that type of thing. Yep, silver gold. Uh, you know, when, when you're coming down and you're starting out fishing, if you haven't been here, like we talked in a previous video, uh, I use some search baits. You know, and I, I move around. I keep the keep on the trolling motor, keep moving until I start getting bit. Uh, I caught one a day on a crankbait. Uh, so then you can slow down and and start saturating the area. Right. You know, and, and watching what, what you're fishing, where you're getting your bites. Uh, some of the fish I had today, they were biting on, on uh, the edges of hydrilla, like little mm -hmm. clumps of hydrilla. So, uh, like Jerry's talking, he, he found in areas that uh, were matted vegetation, which is great this time of year if you're punching. You know, this, this kind of weather that you're seeing now, uh, earlier in the day, there was not a cloud in the sky. Mm -hmm. Those bluebird days, even though it's windy, even though it's cold, you can, you can smoke them pretty good uh, punching. Yeah. So I take these big bass, these big females, and I compare them to a big buck. 
they do not want to come out of that heavy cover and feed if they don't have to. I mean, if they can eat underneath that matted vegetation and feed underneath there, they're going to feed underneath that mat. So the closer you can get punching through this hydrilla or getting, you know, slowing down and finding the fish, I mean, you're go you're going to have better success than just you can't be speeding around trying to, you know, you've got to cover water or you've got to find vegetation that's very dense and you've got to stay close to it because these fish aren't going to come out from underneath there in this cold front like this. They're going to stay close as they can to that matted cover. No, they're just not out there roaming around. Mm -hmm. They here. just want to feed where they feel safe. You know, they want to be underneath that where they feel safe and, and then once that sun gets up, then you know they come out and start moving around a little bit. But yeah, they're going to stay as tight as they can to this cover. Yep. All right. And then when it comes to, I know we're going to start getting the questions on the spawn. When's it going to happen? When's it, you know, when are they going to start moving in on beds and all that kind of stuff? And, you know, there's a few variables that play into that. Mm -hmm. But what you guys have seen over the years, typically, and with, with your experience, is it starts about... And it's starting, kind of starting right now, but you know, as you get on through December and through the first of the year and you start getting these cold fronts every four or five days, it seems like we get them. Um, uh, they're going to start moving up. The males are going to start making beds. And I mean, they're going to, they're going to start getting in a swing, but it all has to do with the moon and these fronts and when this weather changes and that just kicks them in gear. And you know, cooler it gets the faster it gets you know i mean it just depends on, on what the weather's like when yeah. they're going to start but i mean they're they're right there at the front door right now yeah start with that <laughs> yeah i used a big I, word I, yeah that's car yeah can you write that in a sentence not, Davey, <laughs> not, in, this, not in this channel please. put that down <laughs> below concur <laughs> yeah i do can i use it in a sentence go yeah, ahead <laughs> yeah i do concur with jerry uh so uh jerry and i were talking earlier i've seen about three beds a fanned area uh, in the last week. Mm -hmm. um, the, the fish aren't up. They're not on the beds mm -hmm. right now. Um, but it's like what Jerry said, they're starting to think about it. Um, so I found typically that February is the month. That that's, is the that's month. the big month. But that doesn't mean you can't catch them in January mm -hmm. and March because I've done both sight fishing on beds. Right. So, uh, you know, we're coming into that season. It isn't like up in the northern states where they have. A Two much weeks, smaller, weeks. yeah, that's small it. window. So Florida, it's really spread out. So that's why we get some lot of big fish from say Thanksgiving to Easter. We get a lot of good quality fish. I caught my biggest fish for last year in April. Yeah, I mean she was still loaded in April. Mm -hmm. So I mean you know it just it's a it's a four or five month deal here. Yep. Yeah, which is real nice. Okay. All right. So there's your update as far as some baits we covered. We talked about a little bit of, you know, the fish are starting moving around a little bit. Um, so at this point, we're going to go ahead. I'm just going to jump right into bow fishing, folks. It's going to be tough for a little while. Uh, with these winds like it is, it really gets things churned up. Uh, when we got these fronts moving in, we get clouds and, you know, clouds and wind and rough water make it difficult to see the fish. They are out there. We've got some spots that we can always uh, hide from the wind. So if you are coming down you know, through the holidays and want to jump on, onto a uh, bow fishing trip with Dave and I, let us know. But I can tell you that um, you know we're gonna have to do some searching, but they are there and you're gonna have a lot of fun when it comes to uh, getting those big tilapia and, and gar if you want those too. So um, I, I will tell you though that, that my son and I, we, we, we bow hunt for tilapia as well. And what we do a lot of time is, and I don't, I'm sure people would be interested in this is, we go out in Garcia's at nighttime and shine a light on them and water's really clear and with that light you can just I mean almost just get right up on top of them and they don't spook and you can shoot them that way as mm -hmm. well right you know so we do it that way yeah a lot of times you get a little bit more of a wind lay down during the, yes yeah. during the evening hours as well so yeah so anyway hit us up you know if that's something you're interested in for sure at this time we're going to go ahead and jump to Dave's kayak update of the week Hello everyone, Dave here from Hooked on Headwaters and I am standing at the Headwaters Lake Kayak Launch. As you can see behind me, it's opened up. Let me tell you a story about this. I was out Tuesday of this week. It was blowing. I was joined by Dave from Yak and Bassin and this was bogged in. There's no way we could have launched the kayak from here on Tuesday. Um, so we had to walk down the bank there as most kayakers have been doing for the past almost year about 50 to 75 yards down and find an opening and launch well uh, on that same day tuesday it, the wind blew it was wicked out there 
on our way back we were really surprised and delighted to find this it had opened that northwest wind pushed everything out so as you can imagine paddling pedaling in those conditions was just physically exhausting so this was just a wonderful sight to see on our way back from a long day of fishing so with that said this is my kayak report for this week it's thanksgiving week so happy thanksgiving for everyone but for all you kayakers come on down the kayak uh, launch is open as you can see what a sweet sight behind me is the parking lot and there's a the hill so with that said so long till next time bye all right folks so we're gonna go over to jerry here top two lure picks coming out here this week to fish what would you be what would you recommend if i was coming out here this week to fish i would choose a speed worm definitely and a june bug with red in it um, that that's a good bait to choose and then a black and blue chatter bait with a gold blade or even the silver blades fine but just you know it maybe if you want to add like a three inch craw or something like that behind it or you know a small fluke or something like that as a trailer you know something like that so a black and blue chatter bait and uh a june bug colored speed worm would be the baits i would go with there we go right on dan is now going to give us a little demonstration and run through on how to get the most effective casting in high wind conditions which we're going to be seeing quite a lot of as we come mm -hmm. through the fall and the winter you know these winds pick up 15 20 miles an hour yeah so uh they can either make it miserable for you out there or you can uh take advantage of some techniques that you're about to dan you're about to learn from dan so we're gonna go ahead and do that now okay guys so talking about this wind as you can see in the background we have a lot of wind uh, an issue i see with some of my customers that uh, fish with a spinning rod is line control and casting in a wind uh, you can get a get into some frustrating situations when you're casting in with uh, in windy conditions so especially casting crosswind so right now we have a wind blowing from the east to the west what happens is when you cast if you don't control your line the wind just blows it off it's still peeling off the reel right now finally just stop so I have an extra 15 to maybe 20 feet of line out there and in these areas like headwaters you have a lot of grass that line may blow into uh, cattails and get you tangled up or over the top of a mat and can mess up a perfect cast so a tip when you're casting in windy conditions I've used this for years and it's highly effective when I make a cast I'll pick my target if I'm casting crosswind and I lay my rod tip on the water as, when I make my cast and I'll demonstrate and I also palm the spool with my left hand uh, slowly uh, controlling the line I, when you lay your rod tip at the water it lays your line on the water and the, the line sticks to the water and so now I have a straight line to where my bait is that didn't sound very good <laughs> so when you so when you cast across a crosswind you'll cast palm the spool lay your rod tip on the water all in one motion I'll do it one more time so I'm casting controlling the line the amount of line that's coming off the spool I feather it with my hand on the spool and went right when my baits hitting the water my rod tips hitting the water just like that it keeps your line from blowing off the reel and causing other aggravations another uh, another tip that I use with a spinning rod I do almost all of my reel manipulation with my left hand for you left-handed guys this is a right-handed configuration for a spinning reel for a left-handed configuration the hand will be on the right so I'm right-handed the only thing I do with my right hand is control the rod and holding the line but everything else I manipulate with my left hand on the reel so when I cast if you'll notice I haven't closed the bail I rarely if ever see the lines blown off I rarely close my reel with the handle reason being is I find the wind knots if you fish with a spinning rod any amount of time you've found 
that you have a wind knot when you cast it looks like a ball of spaghetti comes off your reel. One way to avoid that is controlling the line with your hand and closing the, the bail with your hand. Make a cast, lay it down. As you can see, I close the bail and I slide my hand up the line and it puts the line tight around the spool so as I reel it won't cause a, uh, a wind knot in future casts. Okay, folks, as we've been uh, requesting people to send in their pictures of bass, we got some uh, great pictures that came in this week for our dinks to donk section. So we're going to go ahead and go to that now so you can check out some of our fan favorites for this week. Dave. Okay. Yikes. <laughs> All right, guys, that's going to wrap it up for this week's Hooked on Headwaters edition down here at Headwaters Lake. I want to thank everybody that's uh, jumping in here, giving great advice, everybody. I want to thank all you guys that are out there watching these videos. We really appreciate it. Subscribe, hit the notification bell so you don't miss our videos, and uh, give us a thumbs up if you like it. Leave comments below, and don't forget to continue to submit your, send in your fish catches, your dinks to donks, doesn't matter where you're at, what lake can be up north, down here, just send us a quick email, attach the picture, name, what you caught it on, what it is, what size it is, things yeah. like that, so we can put it in the next video. So for me, see y'all next week. See you guys next week. Have a good Thanksgiving. See you on the water. It is Thanksgiving week, so happy Thanksgiving, everyone, and God bless.